Right now I want to show you how you can take a metal that is not really horribly stiff. You can see how pliable this is. And you can turn it into a metal that is very stiff by folding it and pounding it together. So to start that out, like this is a this is a uh, smaller one and this is a little thinner metal than this. It's an aluminum, but you still can get it to a pretty beefy state where you can have some stability in it. So to start that out again, as I was saying, I'm going to I will take a piece of this is brass. It's not really really firm like that other metal was. Um and one of the things that you have to know is that as soon as you start to pound this out, it's going to spread out. So one of the things you're going to have to do is clip it so that you can keep these little mountains here. You can do it. I can't do it now on the side of the table because I won't be able to show you. But you can take all sorts of clamps and clip it to the table. What I like to do is just kind of mess it up a bit like this and then fold it so that you might be able to use your hands with it and start to get your shaping. But it is way better when you start to use any kinds of, of clamps and press it together. Okay, so now let me get some of my tools that I would do this with and we'll continue to look at this. Because I have um, a print already on this surface, if I am going to start pounding it, I might want to use um, something to cover it up so it doesn't scratch the surface. And I'm just going to pound it where I was and then start to make little places. Now, if I don't want that silver to show, then I have to get this to go backwards and push it down and then pound it back. So the Bottom line is, you play. You figure out what you want to see, where you want to go, and since this is still pretty pliable, you can do a lot just with your hands until you start punching it in. Now, if you watch this, you can see this start to press out. So if you don't want it to do that, you clamp it to the side of the table, and as you keep this in, then your folds won't go out. They'll stay where they are. So once you continue to do this, you get some really interesting heavier weight metal if you want to use it for something. Now you see that totally spread out. So I would need to make sure this is going to either stay clamped to itself or hold it and not smack my finger and just get it to do what I want it to do. Pressing it down to the side of the table is a much easier idea. But what does happen here is now you see the rigidity of this and you see the pliableness of this. So if you're looking for metal that's not quite as thick and you want to get some interesting shapes out of it, then this is the way to do it and then it keeps its form really well. Then you can have a print on it, you can have painted it, you can just use the pure metal, but whatever it is, it'll work for you in your work. So for this piece of metal, I just folded it and folded it. This is a little thicker metal than this is. All I did was make, if you can see all those lines, I just kept making fold lines. And the fold lines were pressed and also hammered. You don't want to, if you're using a print and you don't want to use your, ruin your print, then go ahead and use some kind of paper or something on top of it. This, I'm going to press down a little bit and then make a fold. So you can fold these or mess them up any way you want. Use a couple of tools, get them going. And then for these, once I folded this all up, I took it apart. And when I took it apart, then I had all these really cool lines. Now, I didn't totally do what I did here, and that is hammer it down. So this is a little bit harder to pull apart. But if you want that edge to stand up, that's a good way to do it. Get so like, like I said, this will give you a really firm shape that if you wanted to use it for a backing or attach things to it, it's very solid.
Taking metal and making specific shapes is pretty easy. This is a, um, it's a die cutting block, I guess you would call it. What you can do is you can put the metal inside here, unscrew that a teeny bit, Just a teeny bit more, there we go. Okay, now if I wanted to make a whole bunch of these shapes, what I'll do is I'll actually take them and use my tools. Well, if I leave those in, they're easier to get out. They just fall out. So in, make, in doing these, you can cut very nice shapes out of the metal, and then you can use them in any kind of collage because now you have these little shapes, circular, obviously, because they're all circular. And then you can put holes in them with a uh, hole punch and you can string them or do whatever you want to with them. Now, if you want to put them into collage, like into paint, if you put some holes in them, some of the paint will come up between them and help hold them down to the surface. Laying them on top of the surface with paint and not getting anything to take the edges in, they might just come off because they're pretty slippery on the back. So this is another way to use your metals, and that is to get some kind of a cutting block like this. And then you have here, I have many shapes and then I have all these little guys that go in there to cut my shapes so it makes it really easy and I use this this block here on it in the center I can make a circular shape that has ridges around it now this has all sorts of um, you see it tore there because it was pounded in far enough to like make the shape totally and break out, which is still something you can use. When I start to do some of these things, I can layer them and put other pieces behind them and construct almost floral-like patterns. And all these kind of things can have, um, they all of them can be attached to any type of artwork because all you have to do is put little holes in them and they fit. So you can build all sorts of textual surfaces and continue to have other things that in metals can go into other types of collage. Another way I like to use these metals is on my different sculptures or different pieces of art that I'm doing. And if you can see here, I have this metal thing, this strip thing going on. So all I am doing is cutting pieces, little thin pieces. This is about 32 gauge, I think, metal. I'll have it in the PDF and a place where you can actually buy this aluminum in larger pieces in case you might want to use it. I'm going to try something really quick here. See if this switches around. It doesn't. Sometimes when you cut from the back, the strip will leave the color on the outside. If not, you just straighten it out. Because, see, I don't want to roll this around for just the silver. I want the color. And all I really am doing here is taking my metal making it tight and letting it go where it goes. This one's going to come back over here now. And then I'll take a new piece and continue. Now this entire piece here will eventually have um, this metal all the way around it with the colors. So all I'm doing is taking it around and just kind of like pinching it. Thing is that if you like to use a lot of fiber in different things, these metals are really cool to wrap around fiber and make little packets and stuff because they stick. They don't. They don't need to be. Um, they don't have to have glue or anything. Right here, this is a print that was crinkled the way I showed you by pounding it. 
and then I riveted it to the front. So these have a lot of uh, places that they can be used in mixed media. Here's a quick look at just a couple of things that were made with metal elements. This right here you can see is those little disc things and they were cut out of beverage cans and they can put to be put together any way you want. Taking the lightweight metals, these are beverage cans, but you can uh, staple them into something as simple as how we used to make those chains when we were kids out of papers. Here are little pieces that have been folded and crocheted together to be used on the side of a sculpture. These are quite a bit of those little discs cut and crocheted and wired together. Soft metals again, a print on one side, a little hole cut in. You can see how soft they are. You can form them any way you want on these places and use them in your mixed media. And this larger sculpture has different pieces of the metal that was crunched and wrapped with wire.